everyone, welcome to another tutorial. My name is Michelle White and I'm the Creative Project Manager over at Reach. <laughs> if you've watched a couple tutorials, I'm sorry. I swear there are other people who do other tutorials, but you are stuck with me again on, on this one. Um, before we sort of dig into this application, it's just kind of important to take a step back and kind of describe what this application is built for. Um, and again, depending on how you're creating content, you actually might not even use this, this application. So let's just take a step back before we kind of jump into this tutorial. So first off, the media library, basically it's like your, your cloud storage, meaning that any content that you're uploading to the playlist is just getting stored here. It doesn't mean that you actually need to start in this application. And that's what I wanted to kind of mention uh, before I dig into this tutorial. There's really three main reasons why you would use this application. But before I dig into that, let's just take a step back. So depending on how you're creating content, right? Content can be JPEGs, PNG files, right? PowerPoints, PDFs, videos. There's a million different type of, you know, content out there. If you're using another system to create content, you actually will not be in the media library. Your workflow is going to start in the playlist. You'll select the playlist application. You'll select one or again, multiple playlists. You'll hit add content and then you'll drag and drop right in here. Then the files basically get stored again in the media library. So that would be your workflow. Again, if you're using a different software, Adobe, I think Canva is a very popular one, PowerPoints. So don't feel like you need to start here. Now, the three reasons why you would use our media library application. Well, first off, if you're creating content in our system. So we have an announcement editor or announcement tool that again, allows our clients to kind of come in here and sort of create the content. Whenever I describe this announcement tool, I always refer to like paint. If you guys remember back in the day, I always say it because everyone's always like, oh yeah, you know, I know what she's talking about. The second reason why you'd be in this application is again, if you are using Canva or you want to use Canva, um, we've had some clients that are familiar with it and they just kind of want to pull in those templates that, you know, basically you've created. Um, I know again, Canva also allows you to export the files as a JPEG and PNG. And again, you could then go into the playlist and kind of drag and drop there. And then the other reason is if you ever needed to find the asset. So we're not limiting you guys to like, you know, cloud or storage space. I mean, there's really no reason, you know, why you maybe would want to delete the asset from the media library. But again, if you remove an asset from a playlist, it doesn't mean it's deleted. You're just removing the asset from the playlist. That's it. But if you really wanted to find the asset, you wanted to, you know, remove it completely from your, you know, your account, that's where you'd go to the media library. And today that's what we're just going to talk about is how do I find those assets? Um, how can I sort of, you know, organize my, my content and how can I filter and, and search through it? So hopefully that kind of like explains maybe different workflows, because I know a lot of people think they need to be in the media library and it's, kind of misleading because it just depends on, you know, what direction you're using for your, your content. So let's go ahead and jump into this. All right, so right off the bat, you guys, you can see in these tables, there's a lot of ways you can find the asset, right? I mean, I can physically just type in the name if I know it, or I can, again, search by users. Um, there's arrows actually right up here too. So you can kind of see, I can filter maybe, you know, by all the super admins or all the ones that Michelle's uploaded. So there's a lot of different ways, again, to filter and, and sort. Um, also within our tables, if you go up to the three dots here and go to visible columns, um, I can actually sort of add on some more columns or again, I can sort of remove some. So it just kind of depends, you know, everyone's different, obviously. It just kind of depends, you know, what columns do you want available? And obviously it's, it makes the most sense to you. Um, another thing to you guys is I can actually drag and drop in here um, again, we talked about earlier that different workflows. So again, depending on that, you may be in the playlist or again, you know, you do have that option to drag and drop right, right into here. Um, you can see the left side too, kind of underneath here as I was sort of uploading, you could see it sort of populate. Uh, the PowerPoint and PDF is coming, but we don't need to wait for that. So we'll just kind of hit okay. Um, all right, so as you know too, down here in the left corner, we do have what we call a pagination. And then this is telling you how many items in that page are, are sort of displaying. So 10 is sort of that default number, but again, we can jump to 20. And of course that will decrease the page. Um, if I jump to five, obviously there's gonna be more pages to kind of cycle through. But again, you guys, um, a lot of different ways to find and search for those, those assets. 
All right, so let's talk about some functionality. Um, so first off, if it's a PowerPoint or PDF, right, those are sort of two things that can have multiple slides. And so you can see what we call this, by the way, we call it a carrot. Um, but essentially, you can hit this little carrot, and then it's going to drop down the slides underneath. So in our um, playlist management, you really have um, a couple options when it comes to scheduling like a PowerPoint or again, like a, a PDF, again, with something with, with multiple slides. Um, in the playlist, you can actually decide to say like, hey, I want the entire PowerPoint to, to display. Or you can say, hey, I only want slide two to run on Tuesday and maybe slide three to run every single day. Um, so again, in the playlist management, you actually have that, that flexibility, which is kind of nice. All right, so more functionality here. Um, of course, if I select an asset or, or even select two, um, of course I can delete it. And then I can copy. Um, sometimes this comes in handy when you are in charge of basically multiple facilities or multiple locations. Maybe you're, again, maybe you're kind of on the corporate side or, or on the marketing side, you're, you're uploading an, an asset and maybe you want to copy that to, again, some, some other location. Um, that's kind of where this copy selection may come, uh, come in hand. Some functionality in the three dots, of course. So if we kind of select this, we can assign tags, which we'll dig in a sec, you guys. Um, large preview, large preview is just, again, it's gonna bring you into a new page. It's just really gonna allow you to see, you know, what is this asset? Um, to get back, you're just gonna hit the media library that will bring you back into where we started. Um, another thing too, is you can actually download the file. So common requests actually is some clients, they might upload or have assets. And they want to download those assets and actually, you know, email them or or um, share them to their to their team in a different way. All right, so let's dig into tags. So we do not have folders, as you can see, at least as of right now. Um, it's obviously been a, a common request from our, our clients to add folders, which, again, I can see kind of happening um, down the road here. But as of right now, we have what we call tags. And, and tags is what our clients are using to essentially organize their, their material. And you don't need to use tags. It's, it's definitely you know, op optional. Um, but the best workflow when it comes to tags is we wanna start by like creating them, okay? And so what you wanna do is you wanna go to the three dots here and you wanna go to create tag. So I've already got some that I've created, but let's kind of create some together. So let's just do, um, let's do marketing uh, materials. I'll hit add. And again, you can actually add multiple. Uh, maybe you want to organize it by like, you know, HR information. You can hit add. Um, maybe it's like weekly, you know, information. Again, how you want to organize your content is completely up to you. But as you can see, the first part is really just, again, adding those tags and they're orange just to help you indicate like, hey, these are the three that you've added. These blue ones were like pre-existing ones. So once we've done that, we're gonna hit okay. Now the second part is to assign those tags. And there's really two ways to assign a tag. Now for me, I like to go the, the first route, which is what I'm gonna teach you is where I like to sort of select the multiple assets. And then I like to go to the three dots and hit assign tags. That's just what works for me. And so what you're seeing in here is these are the tags you've created. Now, what are the assigned tags? So out of these three assets that I've selected, what tags are you assigning? Well, I'm gonna assign HR information. I'm gonna assign marketing material. And I'm gonna assign maybe some, some corporate information. And so you can kind of see below, by the way, that it's happening real time, obviously. So these three tags are being assigned to these three assets. Now, another way that you can obviously assign tags is that you can simply select the asset and you can go up here under asset details. And then here, if you hit the plus, it allows you to just simply type in or I'll just select the first one here. Um, again, it allows you to select the tag. I personally like to do the bulk way where I'm selecting multiple assets and assigning that. Um, but again, either again either direction is completely fine. Back to the asset details, you can also change the name. So I know sometimes, and, and I'm guilty of this as well, is when I'm like working in Photoshop, I'll save an, an asset that makes sense to me, but it's a terrible name. It's just, it is what it is. And then I'll upload it. 
And as I uploaded, I'm like, oh my gosh, no one is going to know like what this means or like, what is this asset name? So um, again, you can kind of come in here and then just, you know, physically change the name so it makes sense. In the beginning, right, we talked about that different workflow. If you're looking to use an R announcement editor, which again is like our backend system, we've got some preset templates in there. You can go in there and sort of create announcements. Um, this is where you would go for that. And then of course, Canva. So if you want to try using Canva, maybe you've never used it before, um, you kind of want to experiment with that. Again, you can create Canva here. Um, the only thing I will say you guys is when you do have Canva, um, I'll just kind of walk through this just to get you kind of where you need to go. Um, there are different design types. For the most part, I usually just do presentation. And again, usually your size is 1920 by 1080. But the only thing I was going to mention here is, and I have a Canva account, so it kind of brings me right into here. If you don't have an account, it's actually going to ask you to log in or sign up. Um, the nice thing about Canva is like you actually don't have to pay for an account. So you can just create a free account and then right away you can just start digging into this and start creating content. Um, Canva definitely does have its own sort of templates that you can sort of, you know, search and kind of play around with. They have different elements and text tools. Um, again, so if you're not familiar with this, it's definitely, you know, worth kind of checking out and, and just seeing if that's something you want to use. Um, for people who have already are using this, um, what's nice, you guys, is we can actually pull your templates directly in. Um, and again, just to give you sort of a, a quick little rough um, overview of this, because there is a tutorial already on this. But essentially what you'll do, you guys, is you'll kind of create your, I'm just going to select one here. You'll kind of make your changes here. You'll get it to look great. And then what you'll do is you'll just hit save to media library. Once you hit that, then it will sort of be up here in the, in the first row. Um, that's where then you would go into the playlist to, again, assign that asset to it. All right, and just a couple more things to kind of point out. Um, so the three dots, right? These three dots, we call these sort of commands. These commands are going to vary just a little bit depending on the format. So again, if I was creating an announcement, right? I went to add assets and I used the uh, announcement tool. And for whatever reason, I need to go back and you know make a change. Um, if I select that asset and hit the three dots, you're going to see edit announcement. So that's going to appear versus like the top one right here. It says video. Video doesn't obviously allow you to, to edit it, right? So um, the three dots, three dots, excuse me, vary just a little bit based on the format. But for the most part, you're going to get those two things, assigned tags and large preview. Like those two are going to be assigned to every single type of asset. The only thing that's going to vary is if you can download it or again, you guys, you can edit the announcement. So just wanted to sort of make that clear because um, it does vary just a, a little bit. All right, everyone, that's that's all she wrote today for this uh, tutorial. Um, again, if there's something that was just like not clear or maybe I missed something and you just have more questions, definitely reach out to us. Um, otherwise, again, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video and I hope you guys have a great day.